So this this goes to my little canister set at uh, the Paula Dean store, and it works out perfect for my used grease because you know grease can be used more than one time, and especially if you're cooking with peanut oil, it has such a high resistance to burning. So uh, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more vegetable oil. But you know what I could do? I could get it. I'm gonna get it out of my fryer because I've used this grease and I really, really like uh, my grease the second time around because it just browns so much better. Now, oysters come in a, what you call oyster liquor. And you never want to throw this away if you're making like a seafood gumbo or some kind of dish like that, jambalaya, if you're doing seafood, because that's like liquid gold. But I don't need that liquor to fry my oysters. So I'm gonna drain these. And it'll take a minute for them to drain. So I'm gonna sit these right here. And then I'm gonna talk to y'all about frying oysters. There is so many different ways that you can fry your oysters. And I tell you, fried oysters is one of my favorite of all the seafoods. I love them. And uh, for us today, I'm going to use flour and panko. I love the crunch that Panko gives it. How about y'all? Does anybody out there like Panko? Do you have... Talk to me. Send me something. Because uh, I do love Panko. And if you have a good recipe, send it on. And I will give you credit for it. Okay, so... When you're using, I have found that when you're using panko, for it to really work well, you've got to mix it with some flour because that flour will help the panko actually stick to whatever you're frying. Now, because these oysters live in salt water and um, because of that reason, I'm not gonna salt them but I am gonna use a seafood seasoning. And this is mainly what we use down here is a whole bay, I'll just go ahead and say it. And I'm gonna add some pepper. You can tell where I've been when I'm frying. Look, I, <laughs> I leave a trail of fingerprints with flour. <laughs> All right, so after they Drain, I'm gonna to toss them in here and go straight into the frying pan when the grease is right. And I would like for that grease to uh, reach 350 degrees. And when I think it's close, I'm gonna pull out my thermometer and put in it, okay? Okay, I thought while I was always getting hot that I'd whip us up some tartar sauce because that's definitely what we eat with fried oysters. We don't eat cocktail sauce with it, but tartar sauce. And I am so proud of the tartar sauce that's made in all of my restaurants. Uh, they truly followed my recipe, so that's always good. All right, so I don't have any dill relish, so I'm just use, using some uh, sliced dill pickles. And I forgot my onion. So to me, what makes good, good tartar sauce is not chopped onions, but it's, uh, it's the onion juice. Now I had the purple onions left over from uh, dinner night before last, so I think I'm gonna use those. And to me, these purple onions are stronger, a lot stronger than my sweet Vidalia onion. But, so I'll put those in there and see how that's gonna work. This silly salt is so good. This was our giveaway this week. 
Yep. And our Monday bundle one. Yep. All right, so I'm just going to put a little silly salt in there. And uh, believe it or not, the lemon pepper actually has salt in it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that to kind of get that lemon flavor. And I, I just love this little, this miniature food processor because it's just perfect if I'm making cocktail or tartar, you know, just a small amount of, uh, of a sauce. So I'm gonna use my, my helping finger. That's a long pointer finger, isn't it? You know, to me, uh, for tartar sauce, less is more. You know, no, no kind of tricks on your tart. I just keep it nice and simple. I've never made tart using purple onion. Uh, so it's actually, come on top. It's actually turned it a little purple. I may never use purple onion ever again if it affects the flavor. It's delicious. It's a little on the salty side, and I didn't even put salt in it, so. All the salt came from the silly salt and the lemon pepper. So in order to cut, some of that salt taste, I'm just going to add more mayonnaise. Now to me, you would never, ever, ever use a, a sweet pickle for tartar sauce. You know, the sweet radish, because those oysters scream for it. A scream for, <laughs> a scream for, a scream for deal, y'all. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, so that's ready. We did that so quickly, and that purple onion actually gave it a, like a soft pink color, and you can really taste the onion since it was purple. That's, that's just a strong, strong onion. So there we go. That easy. So now all we have to do is get those oysters ready. And you'll want to be fairly gentle with your oysters. And you want to add them as fast as you can at the same time. Because it doesn't take long for these little things to cook. Now, some people like, in fact, I've had them come into the restaurant and say, now I want crispy oysters. Okay, I'll cook them crispy. All right, so here we go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Please don't pop on me. I feel like I'm cooking chicken livers. You have bad chicken livers will pop you. Your body is much like a chicken liver. Whoa! Because uh, the oysters are in their liquor, you don't need to soak these in buttermilk or anything like that. You're gonna let their liquor be their base. So I wish I knew what kind of oysters y'all like. If you like crispy or Not so crispy. These are looking beautiful, y'all. 
just beautiful. I couldn't read what my, okay, there's an on medium. I'm going to move that up to medium high. And we're going to be having fried oysters with tartar sauce in just a second. Okay, y'all, our fried oysters are ready. And I'm going to just lay them right there for a second before I move them to the plate. This is just beautiful. Well, I'm waiting on y'all. Will you go ahead? <laughs> <laughs> They're hot. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. Isn't that why you like it with your heart? Mmm. -hmm. Mm. No. Rumor has it that oysters are like an aphrodisiac for men. I don't know if it is for women. It's never made me an aphrodisiac. <laughs> made me want to go home and go to sleep. So full from oysters. But um, they're really so good. Mmm. Mmm. No, please eat one while they're hot. It's the pretty, the picture, so pretty, it's gonna be a pretty picture. Loving best dishes, y'all. <laughs> y'all, <laughs> we, <laughs> we cleaned out the oyster plate as soon as they were cool enough for us to put in our mouth, didn't we? Yes, ma'am. And while I was standing up there eating an the oyster, I told Teresa and Eddie, oh, stuffings. There was one thing I wanted to mention to y'all. Oh, and this is it. My grandmother, Paul, was a meal user, M-E-A-L, ground, stone meal, ground, meal. My mother was a flour user. Like grandma, for her fried okra, she put it in cornmeal. My mother did not do that. She put them in flour and hers were so much better than my grandmother's. I can see my mother right now in her cast iron Dutch oven, standing up there deep frying our okra. Oh, uh, so the point I'm trying to make is a lot, 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 lot of people meal their fish, their oysters and their shrimp. The only thing that I ever meal is fried fish. And then I'll mix some flour in with that, whatever mix I'm using. But, uh, so you can always use meal. I forgot to mention that. So I just wanted to stick that in as a reminder. But to me, flour is just so much better than meal. So there you go. The proof's in the pudding. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Paula Dean. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be alerted when I post a video. Love and best dishes, y'all.